this video gives an algorithm known by the name of Gram-Schmidt to convert a set of linearly independent vectors into a related set of orthogonal vectors. So suppose we have n vectors, v1, v2, v3, all the way through vn, that are linearly independent. Recall that this means that none of these vectors is a linear combination of the others. How can we use them to construct n vectors w1 through wn that are orthogonal? Recall that two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So I'm going to show you an algorithm to do this. And this algorithm basically replaces one vector at a time, building up a bigger and bigger collection of orthogonal vectors. So we'll start with v1. We don't actually need to fix v1. We'll just let w1 be exactly the same thing as v1. I want to note, because we're going to need to use this in a moment, I want to note that w1 is not the zero vector. Or in other words, v1 is not the zero vector. And that's because we assumed that we started with a bunch of linearly independent vectors. If this first one were the zero vector, then this set of vectors wouldn't be linearly independent, because you can always write zero as a linear combination of a bunch of other things just by letting the coefficients all be zeros. OK, so now I've hopefully convinced you that w1 is not the zero vector. And we're going to go on to the next step, which is to fix v2. v2 might need some fixing, because it's not automatically going to be orthogonal to v1 unless we modify it. So here's how we're going to modify it. We're going to let w2 be the same thing as v2 minus some multiple of w1. And that multiple is going to be given by v2 dotted with w1 divided by w1 dotted with w1. Notice that this expression here is a scalar, because dot products give us scalars. And we didn't divide by 0 because w1 is not the 0 vector. So its dot product with itself can't be 0. So w2 is a legitimate vector. And now let's see what happens when we take w2 and dot it with w1. That's the same thing as taking this expression for w2 and dotting it with w1. Let me distribute the dot product. And now the w1 dot w1 is going to cancel out. And I'm left with this expression v2 dot w1 minus v2 dot w1. So that's going to go to 0. Therefore, w2 is orthogonal to w1. And we've made a good start. We now have two vectors, w1 and w2, that are orthogonal to each other. Note also that w2 is not going to be the 0 vector. That's because w2 is a linear combination of v2 and w1, w1 being the same thing as v1. So w2 is a linear combination of v2 and v1. And since these v vectors are linearly independent, we can't get a linear combination of them equaling 0 unless the coefficients are all 0. And the coefficient of v2 is 1, not 0. Let's continue by fixing up v3 using the same ideas. So we're going to let w3 be v3 minus a multiple of w1 minus a multiple of w2. The multiple of w1 is going to be given by v3 dot w1 over w1 dot w1. And the multiple of w2 is going to be given by v3 dot w2 divided by w2 dot w2. w3 is a legitimate vector because it's just a linear combination of other vectors. And notice that w1 dot w1 can't be 0, since w1 is not the 0 vector. And also w2 dot w2 can't be 0. So we're not dividing by 0 here. Now I claim that w3 is going to be orthogonal to both w1 and w2. If I take w3 dot w1 and distribute the dot product, I get a w2 dot w1, which I already know is 0 because w2 was orthogonal to w1. 
And after canceling some w1.w1s, I get an expression that's equal to zero. Similarly, if I dot w3 with w2, I get now this middle term goes to zero since w1.w2 is zero. And now this third term cancels with the first term to give us zero. So w3 indeed is orthogonal to both w1 and w2. The same argument as before tells us that w3 cannot be the zero vector. It's a linear combination of v3, w1, and w2, but w1 and w2 are themselves linear combinations of v1 and v2. So w3 is really a linear combination of v3 and some v1s and v2s whose coefficient of v3 is 1, and so linear independence says that can't give us the zero vector. So we continue in this way, fixing up v4, then v5, and so on. Finally, the last vector vn will replace with wn, which will be vn minus a multiple of w1, minus a multiple of w2, and so on until finally we subtract a multiple of wn minus 1. Anytime I dot product this with a previous w vector, I'm going to get 0. For example, if I dot product it with w3, then all of these terms would go to 0 because all the previous w's are orthogonal. And the w3 dot w3 would cancel, and I'd be left with vn dot w3 minus vn dot w3, which would give us 0. A similar argument shows that wn dotted with, say, w4, or any other of the w's, would give us 0. So in the end, we have w1 through wn, all orthogonal vectors. And arguments like we made previously can be used to show that they're all non-zero vectors, too. Question, are these new vectors, w1 through wn, still linearly independent? In fact, they are. In fact, any set of orthogonal vectors, none of which is the zero vector, will be linearly independent. That's because if we take a linear combination, x1, w1, plus x2, w2, so on, through xn, wn, and if that's equal to the zero vector, then look at what happens if we dot product both sides with, say, w1. Well, on the right side, we'll get zero, since the zero vector dotted with anything is zero. And on the left side, after we distribute the dot product, we'll get a bunch of zeros everywhere, since we've got a bunch of orthogonal vectors. And we'll be left with just x1 times w1 dot w1 equals zero. And since w1 is not the zero vector, so its dot product can't be zero, this means that x1 must be zero. So dotting with w1 shows that x1 is zero. If we dot with w2 instead, the same argument will show us that x2 is zero. And so on, we can keep going to show that all the xi's are zero. Therefore, these orthogonal vectors, w1 through wn, must be linearly independent. So one last theory question before we get an example. If we have these w1 through wn now, a set of non-zero orthogonal vectors, how can we build a set of n orthonormal vectors? Remember, orthonormal means they're not only orthogonal to each other, but they each have length 1. Well, fortunately, that's pretty straightforward. All we do is, I'll call the new set of vectors by u's. I'll let u1 be w1 over its length, u2 be w2 over its length, and so on, up through un, which is going to be wn divided by its length. Each of these u's is just a w rescaled to be length 1. So they'll definitely all be length 1, and they'll also still be all orthogonal. For example, if I take u2 and dot it with u3, that's going to be the same thing as w2 over its length dotted with w3 over its length, 
And if I factor out the 1 over the length of w2 and the 1 over the length of w3, I'm just going to get that scalar times w2 dot w3. Well, this is going to be 0 since the original w's were orthogonal, and therefore the dot product of the, the u's is 0. The u's are orthogonal. So we have a straightforward method of converting non-zero orthogonal vectors into orthonormal vectors. So let's conclude with an example. Let's apply this algorithm to convert this set of three vectors into an orthogonal set of vectors. I'll let you check on your own that this is, in fact, a set of linearly independent vectors, or you can take that on faith. So our first vector, w1, is just going to be the same thing as v1. Our next vector, w2, is going to be v2 minus v2 dot w1 over w1 dot w1 times w1. Let's do some scratch work on the side. v2 dot w1, that's the dot product of these two vectors, which works out to 3, while w1 dot w1 is the dot product of those two vectors, which also works out to 3. So w2 is going to be v2 minus 3 over 3 times w1. That works out to the vector with entries negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. Now we need to build the vector w3. That's going to be v3 minus v3 dot w1 over w1 dot w1 times w1 minus v3 dot w2 over w2 dot w2 times w2. Again, I'll do some computations on the side. And so we end up with this expression, which works out to minus 3, minus 3, 1, 2. So these are our new vectors, w1, w2, and w3. And you can check that they're, in fact, all orthogonal to each other. If I wanted to go one step further and get a set of orthonormal vectors, I could just divide each of w1, w2, and w3 by its length. This video gives an algorithm for turning a set of linearly independent vectors into a set of orthogonal vectors. And if we want, we can go one step further and turn them into a set of orthonormal vectors.